Welcome back to WD MagicCast for the week of August 27th, 2023. This is episode 234. WD MagicCast, the show about the mouse, the marvels, the galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. In this week's show, we have not one, but two Leonards. Matt and Emily Leonard join us to talk about the new Disney Plus series, Ahsoka. And what our review and thoughts of the first two series, uh, first two episodes of the series are... And kind of where we're hoping some of the show may go down the road. So uh, if you haven't watched the two first two episodes, pause here, watch the first two episodes of Ahsoka, come back and, and enjoy this art review. Not too many spoilers, but there are some. We do get into a few different things. Let us know your thoughts about Ahsoka. Make sure to join us and find us on those social networks where we are at WD Magicast. That would be on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Look us up on there at WD Magic Cast. We'll be back in a moment after this break. Hey, Matthew, Jim Hill here. I do the Marvelous Disney podcast with Aaron Adams over at the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network. I know, I know, very humble sounding name. Uh, anyway, I really enjoy what you've been doing over on the Disney Marvels podcast, uh, but as you probably already noticed, the Marvel Us Disney and the Disney Marvels podcast names are very, very similar, which is why I imagine I keep getting mail for you. Um, that's actually why I'm calling today. I wanted to know what you'd like me to do with all of these Yankee Candle catalogs, uh, so uh, please get back to me. Uh, oh, and uh, keep up the great work with the Disney Marvels podcast. Thank you for those kind words, Jim. And make sure to check out Jim Hill on the Marvel Us Disney podcast with Aaron Adams to find out all sorts of wonderful things about Disney, well, Marvel uh, particularly, what's going on with them. And Jim, uh, those catalogs, I'll make sure to give you the forwarding address. And uh, unless if you want to order something, go right ahead. And once again, make sure to check out Marvel Us Disney with Jim Hill and Aaron Adams, wherever you find or listen to your podcasts. And now, on with the show. in a galaxy far, far away, a 13-year-old Tegruda began inspiring hundreds of little girls across the world. Now, 15 years later, she's returned and gets to tell her story even further. So join us as we get to discuss Ahsoka. Hello there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm here. Great. Well, we already lost that. So. No, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. That was a lovely intro, by the way. That, that was fantastic. Well done. Better that than anything I came up with. The cuff and not written five minutes before the show at all. <laughs> no, not at all. No. There you have it. That, that, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is the first, uh, first for this program, an introduction that was actually written before the show. <laughs> <laughs> not during the show. Not during the show. A lot yeah. of first going on, that, you know, in these these more recent episodes. It's a whole new show. I could show you the show. Um, yeah, so we 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 are here to talk the Ahsoka series. Uh, the first two episodes dropped Disney Plus. It was originally going to be Wednesday, and they said, you know what? Let's gonna give it to you on Tuesday for <laughs> one reason or another. And I watched it Wednesday anyway. But um, yes, yeah, so we we had to bring on the the expert, Emily Leonard. We had to bring on Pat Leonard too. I'm her <laughs> rental advisor, <laughs> the puppet master. Yeah. And then I, I decided to come back. I'm here for moral support, and we keep and Matt's here because uh, he's got the microphone <laughs> and the recording equipment. Yes. Wow. Uh, I'm just yeah. here for moral support and, and <laughs> dumb comments. And that's off track. I, no, I'm going to be good tonight. I did, okay. I did my off track conversation before True. we started. True. I was very professional. Like, 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, what do, obviously, we, we, uh, what do you want to talk about? Ahsoka. Let's talk about Ahsoka. Oh, okay. So I was hoping we could talk about Sabine Wren instead. I mean, we can talk about her because she's part of the show and because she's cool. I see. I, so far to the first two episodes, I find the show is actually like more Sabine than like it's a, yeah. it's a, it's, a, it's a Sabine show that they titled Ahsoka so that people could watch it. And I don't say that. I mean, I, I sort of say that as a criticism, but I happen to like both characters. Yeah, so, I'm, so it's like not really so it a sort of washes its own hands. But at the same time, I do feel a little deceived by the advertising. <laughs> we'll get more Ahsoka as the show goes on. Right. Or Boba I mean, she, 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 she has had the most screen time. All right, fair enough. You know, you're you're going to get a, a named actress like Rosario Dawson to, yeah. to play along. You, you're you're going to give her... Or we're going to film as Rosario. Yeah. So, um, overall opinion. First two episodes out of the, the bat out of the six episodes. Is it only six? Eight. No. Eight. Oh, eight. Oh, thank okay. goodness. Eight episodes. Don't worry. Um, okay, so we're a quarter of the way through. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of the eight episodes, what are, you, what are you thinking so far? So far, it's been good. So far, it is actually for me like the most Star Warsiest Star Wars that I have Star yeah. Warsed in some time. Like the opening for the first episode, you had those scrolling. You had the toilet, the the scrolling, the yeah, the title. story, the title yeah. at the beginning. Yes, but also, and I said, I was not surprised when we had. I said to M right off the bat was we we were maybe five ten minutes into the show. I said the music in this is extra, yeah. exceptionally John Williams, and M pulls out her phone and she's oh Kevin Kellner, and I went well there you go she's. He's, uh, you know, that's clone. He did the the music for Clone Wars and the music for Rebels. Yeah, and which makes it, sense. And in both of those shows, one of the things I love about both of those shows is that it's ex- like it's really John Williamsy. It's exceptionally John Williamsy, and this was this was right with it. I it felt very much Star Wars because of the music and the way the music was played. The music is really good. The uh, cinematography is really good. The yeah. way they're staging things. I, right. I don't know if it's a me. Of, the way the, the, a lot of like the, I felt like a lot of the way some of the stuff was staged felt very George Lucas. You know. Yes. Out of a lot of the newer stuff, it, it's um, it's carrying on from different different lengths of. The expanded Star Wars, right? Know, expanded Star Wars is the the other stuff we did, but the the stuff beyond the movies that they've come out with, because the opening temple scene made me feel like I I played that in uh, Fallen Order, mm. Jedi mm. Fallen Order, because there was a po- couple points that you had to go into temples and do stuff like that, like they had Ahsoka doing. It also dealt with the the Night Sisters and, yeah. and all that. So it that all kind of is now is plays into each other. Um, so that was it, it's like it, okay, continue to see that because I you know the Jedi uh, Fallen Order and Survivor are are canonical are part of the the overall story. So to see some of that brought into the shows now is actually pretty cool. Agreed. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, the cat is here and she's a terrible <laughs> distraction. She's just she's it's Emily's cat and she's just thrilled to be here with the two of us talking Ahsoka. And Emily, uh, that's awful of you. Please make your cat a good distraction. She she's, she's very being, happy. She's right being now. very sweet right now. So she's a princess. So this the show has just been ruined by the cat. This is the lolly show now. Yeah. We can't talk about Ahsoka anymore. We're petting the cat. Our show has been taken over by the cat. Get us, get us, the well, let's cat. Oh, which is a perfect segue. To let's talk Loth about cat. The there we go. We're now live oh action. And a live action loath cat. The, well, actually, we've seen loath cats before because they show up in. Uh, there's one in Mandalorian. This, oh yes, this is true, and they are also in uh, um, Batu, Galaxy's Edge, and the right, parks. Right, but, so but you can actually see them there. Cat, this is a proper loath cat on Lethal, and he's oh really cute and adorable. And 
He was so cute. I, in the second episode, when Sabine leaves with Ahsoka, I immediately turned to Dad and I went, is someone going to take care of the loath cat? What did I co- Oh, and I told you that I told you that Ryder thought he was going to yeah. do it. Just- because I'm like, I can't, I can't watch this unless I know somebody's taking care of the log cat. <laughs> Ryder azadi has got it covered. He's there. He's going to come in and Good. he's going to come in once a day and feed the log cat and you know, give it fresh water and <laughs> clean up its box. Do the cat box and clean up after the log cat. I would have been so worried about that log cat. Yeah. The log cat will be okay. It will be fine. They made a poster of it. Yes. Okay. But yeah, the loft cat is really the star of the first That's episode. Funny. It, it 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 is it's well done, and um, it it doesn't look like it's okay. All right, we try to make it too too realistic. It it's just right. Right. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, that that um, loft cat does a good job. Um. How do you think of the human transition of the rest of the the ghost crew so far that we've met? Well, well let's let's just so we can review. Sure. What we've seen go from cartoon to live action, starting with Clone Wars. We've got Hu Yang. We've got Ahsoka, of course, title character. Hu Yang shows up as a and character from Clone for Wars. For those who don't know, he was the lightsaber builder in Clone Wars. You run into him in an episode with Ahsoka when she is teaching younglings to build lightsabers. It's very good. Yes. Also, and voiced by David Tennant there as well. And then, Rouge McDuck. <laughs> yeah, right. Or Doctor Who. The Doctor or, Who as well, uh, yes. Or uh, if you're a How to Train Your Dragon fan, uh, Spite Lout. Or... Gods and omens, uh, uh, etc. Good, good sure. Good omens, sorry, yes. Uh, broad church, etc. Uh, uh, what's the what's the what's the s- staged? That was the series. He and Michael Sheen did a, a series over the pandemic. They did a virtual series called Staged, which I've seen some of. It's very funny. Um, it's on BritBox. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so those are your, those are your your Clone Wars characters. And then from Rebels, we see Harrison Dula. We got Sabine Wren. We've got uh, Chopper shows up briefly. Yep. Not enough Chopper, in my opinion. We'll get more of Chopper. I hope. Chopper is taking care of the Loth Cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, poor well, Loth Cat. One dead Loth Cat. Sorry. <laughs> this machine kills fascists <laughs> and Loth Cats. Um, that was a very good Chopper impression, by the way. That was very cute, what you just did now. I heard that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Chopper. Uh, Ryder Azadi, who was the mm-hmm. the mayor of Munchkin... No, uh, governor? Ma- governor, governor of Munchkin Lethal. City. Lethal. Of Lothal. 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 Yeah, Munchkin City. Oh, my gosh. We the- represent the lollipopkin. Uh, and then, and then, and this is sort of slipped into the series. I just found this out myself, and I, I'm sorry, I don't even have the name of the character. That's how bad I am. We, oh, the one we God, talked about. The, okay. the, the, when, at the beginning of the show, when Ryder is like, ladies and gentlemen of the people, I never really checked to make sure Sabine Wren was here, but I'm going to introduce her just to create dramatic tension. Whoa. Um, there's a, kid there's a young guy there and he's like Sabine Wren's not actually here go and talk to the people Ooh. and um so that is a character from Rebels he's I don't know his name I don't but know he's from the episode where where Ezra goes undercover goes undercover at, at the academy the Imperial Academy and he's one of the guys it's the guy who's like looking for his sister that that Ezra befriends, and now he's like a senator on Lethal. Which is cool. Jake Hell. Hey, 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 watch the language. This is a family <laughs> show. <laughs> senator Jake uh, Hell. Yeah, he's he's from he's from uh, Rebels. So we got five. Five? Yes, five, plus the two from Clone Wars. And seven. That's seven. And that concludes the math portion of the program. <laughs> what was your question? Live action, the transition from, from <laughs> live action to cartoon. Yes. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> Who put me? Why are you going on this show? <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> oh god. Why am I here? It's okay. 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 For the transition. Why from... do you have a sa- picture of a sandwich on your wall? Why? <laughs> The co- the transition from animation to live action you were asking about. Yes. And seven characters there that we can discuss. So, well, I mean, I, we, we've we've discussed. Again? Don't you dare. We've discussed this. So we've discussed the, the transition yeah. of Ahsoka before. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but... So I don't think we need to. I don't even think we need to bring that. So do, so how, what do you want to. Well, like, like um, Hera, Sabine, Chopper. I'm a, huge, I'm a huge fan of the Rebels characters. There's no secret about that. I've mentioned yeah. that. For a lot, I'll start. I'm going to start sort of. Let's start with the fact that I was so thrilled to see who Yang return because I think yeah. he's such a fun character. And you really and I mean, get to see him like it's once. David Ten. I think he shows up a couple of times, but okay. really, really, it's only like one major storyline. Yeah, and it's he's David in two Ten, episodes uh, in um, Clone Wars. Who's always fun to watch and always fun to listen to, and I mean, David Tennant is one of those actors who just always delivers. Even when it's a small part, and I'll go back to sort of How to Train Your Dragon. Of course. He, no, I will, because he's he's only in the movies. That there's Actually, in the third movie, he's got a, there's a scene very at the beginning of the third How to Train Your Dragon movie. He plays a bit part as a guard. And if you know the movie and if you know the scene, oh. it's hysterically funny. He's, really? so, that's him. That's, that's David him? Tennant there. Yeah, we have this discussion every time. I think we do. We do. And you're always like, that's David Tennant? Yes, that's David Tennant. He's okay. there, and he's, and it's a hysterically, and it's, I mean, it's David Tennant, who's a very popular actor and a very loved actor and a very high-profile actor in what is ultimately a two-minute vocal cameo in this movie, and he's hysterically funny, and he delivers, and David Tennant always delivers. So to give him a character like Hu Yang, it's, it's almost like a no-brainer. You know that David Tennant is going to make every moment of that scene shine and we're now at a point with cgi that you can do a character like hu yang and and i don't i don't question it it doesn't no. it, it's not even till just now talking about it that i've stopped and thought about wait a second hu yang is cgi yeah like i'm just now realizing that he's not really there he's cgi yeah whereas if you go back and you watch certain early things in cgi phantom menace um, <laughs> Sorry. There are characters, there are droid characters who are done as CGI, and you realize that's CGI, and they're not really there. But but him, Hu Yang, I absolutely believe in, and I think yeah. I thought he was fantastic, and I love the I love the character, and I love David Tennant, so I thought that was a great yeah yeah. It was done really well. And I keep on thinking whenever he's he's talking, the the first episode. It did dawn on me that it was Tenet until I saw the credits. Right. Second episode, I'm watching it. Like, it doesn't sound like the Doctor. It sounds clo- closer to his Scrooge, Scrooge. Uh, McDuck in- uh, interpretation. Yeah. And, and just in certain lines, but he, he delivers so well with it. And, um, and, the, and the design of the character. He's um, got. He's got a great accent because he's, I mean, he's clearly a Scottish actor, but he kind of, it's not, a, it's, yeah, he's hes had some training and he's had some, where he's like, he's broken his Scottish accent a little bit. And if you actually know uh, Alan Young, who's the original voice of Scrooge, and if you hear him not do, if you hear him speak and not do Scrooge McDuck, and uh, he's got, it's this really sort of weird accent. And David Tennant almost has that same thing. It's not a Scottish accent, and yet it's it's there. There's a there's an interesting accent to it that's not Scottish, even yeah, though he himself is clearly Scottish. And obviously, doing Scrooge McDuck, he can do a Scottish accent. Yeah. Whenever it's he almost, is, almost yeah. If you just Irish. if you hit if you ask, just listen to a, just a regular interview of him. It is you almost don't recognize the voice because he he's got that accent. Yeah. But then you, if he's doing a character, a non-Scottish character, that accent disappears. He right. he, he can turn yeah. it on and off. Yeah, yeah. Or Doctor Who. Doctor Who, Broadchurch. There, there's a there's a few of them where he's able to pull it off. Yeah, he's got he's got such just a wonderful rich voice, expressive voice that he's just it's fun to listen to him. Yeah, he, he is 
absolutely fantastic. But let's talk about some of the rest of the guys. I was, I was actually, I was very pleasantly surprised. I'm so thrilled that they've done this. I guess I'm sort of saving the better ones for later on, but I was actually really thrilled to see Ryder Zadi on the show. Yeah. And very clearly the, the, the same act, you know, it's, it's a, it's a situation like, uh, uh, Bo-Katan yeah. where it's like, let's bring in the voice actor and God, he looks ex- I mean, like, I don't know what he, I haven't seen a specific, I'm just going to pull up a picture of him now, isn't yep. it? But I don't know what he looks like without makeup, but my God, that was, I mean, that was Ryder, R-Y-D-E-R. R Y D E R A Z A D I. By Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. Why do I know that name? What is he in? Shoot. Hang on. Clancy Brown, Shawshank Redemption. Starship Troopers, Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010 version. Cowboys and Aliens. Ahsoka. SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. He's he's Mr. Krabs. Uh yes. Yeah, there you go. That's how I know the name. And I think he's I think he's voiced some other stuff too, but Oh, I never knew that. What? Uh not only did he voice Ryder Azadi in Rebels, but he also voiced Savage Press in Clone Wars. Oh really? Yeah. And the Inquisitor in uh, Tales of a Jedi. Huh. Oh, interesting. Or you know. Oh, and he's in Thor Ragnarok. Really? Yeah. He's in what if? Cow. You got a lot. He was on Ninja Turtles, uh, The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, Ducktales. Speaking of Ducktales, he's on Ducktales. Yeah, the the new Ducktales. Yeah, he was Frankenstein. Wow. Oh. So Rick and Morty. Good Rapunzel. Time. But yeah, no. So it was it was great to see him on the show. I, I just thought it added a it added a richness and a depth to to, uh, and I think it made the some of those transitions that you're talking about, radar or uh, try, that, it made it just that much more believable. You know, it, mm-hmm. it it helped me make that jump. Yeah. But let's talk about the big three that we wanted <laughs> the obvious ones that we need, which are Hera Chopper and Sabine. Yeah. In no particular order. Something. I don't know. You, you can say something. I can say something. Or I can. Who I wants to? Sorry, I'm being an indecisive teenager. Teenager, sure. Um, I want to see. Actually, I want to see more of Chopper before I make any comments about Chopper. Oh, let's see. I was going to save Chopper for last, but okay. No, yeah, so I mean you can you can talk about Chopper. All right. I I what we got of I mean I I was hoping to see him in the first episode. He didn't show up until the the back third of the uh the second episode. But when he did, I mean it, it was just it was Chopper. Yeah. From what I, you know, from what I know of Chopper. I mean the the character the the look was good, the 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 personality uh, Harris telling him to do something and he's getting all frustrated and he's banging on the side of the ship at her. No, I didn't move your stuff. He's it, throwing it's, stuff it's, off this. Frightening me. The more I listen to Chopper, the more I start to understand him. And I found yeah. that I found that particularly going through season four of Rebels, like <laughs> there are things that he'd say and be like, "Oh God, I I can hear <laughs> the words. I know exactly There's what he's saying." He said earlier. In, when I was rewatching the second episode, I, don't I didn't move your stuff. No. Oh, cause he's got no, a couple. That's, that's what Harris says. I didn't move your stuff. Uh, but, oh no! But, but I heard. Oh yeah, but I heard him. I heard him say, "You move my, you move my stuff." And she says, "No, I didn't move your stuff." I heard him say that. Oh. Even before her response, I knew what the line was. It, like. And there's a couple that yeah, there are a couple lines in there like I could interpret. Yeah. You'd think it was like a, you'd think it was my native language at this point. <laughs> You, which you know, speak which fluid I don't chopper. Know it, I don't know if that says something about me and the way I'm taking the character in, which is probably part of it. But I also feel like I saw, I heard in uh, this is slightly off topic, but still on topic. Which is I, I heard a bit of an interview recently with Peter Linz, who's the puppeteer on Lips for Muppets Mayhem. And for those of you who haven't watched Mupp- the character of Lips, he's he's a mumbler. He, he it's it's similar. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And you're not supposed to, he speaks gibberish and you're not supposed to understand what the character is saying. 
But at some points in the series, you can understand what the character is saying. Yeah. And apparently that was a thing, like, as they went along, the director could understand it more. And multiple times the director went to Peter Linz. And, was, and was it, it wasn't even a comment or direction. It was like, you know, I'm actually starting to understand lips. And Peter Linz would stop and go, oh, I need to dial the gibberish back up because that's, that's, I'm defeating the joke if you can actually understand it. So it was, it was a struggle for him. And I kind of wonder if Dave Filoni is reaching that point where it's like they're not masking it as much or not being able to mask it as much as they used to. Or maybe it's just that I've spent way too much time. Yeah. Just got so used to Chopper and yeah. Chopper ease. <laughs> but I do uh, feel like, because I can go back and watch like season one or season two of Rebels and I don't quite understand Chopper, but later Chopper, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know what he's trying to say there. I know exactly what the line is there. Nice. What are you doing? That's uh, that's uh, you and McGregor's wife. Right. 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 As we're jumping as Hera, but we're jumping ahead. I don't think we're jumping ahead. I thought that was unless we've got more to say on Chopper. I don't know. I'm just no, I just I I just like I said I enjoyed what we had. I'm, I'm looking forward to more. I want so more. They're flying the ship. He's looking for the tracking device, and he's just throwing spare parts off the side of the ship. I love that. He's my favorite. Char he's my favorite Star Wars character, period. He's my spirit Star Wars character, and I, yeah. I love him. You Next. jumped on that a little fast, didn't you? Sorry, I'm thinking like, back yep. to... <laughs> I'm thinking back to a few weeks ago. Dad sure. and I were at a convention, and he got me a poster of Sabine and Chopper, a.k.a. my favorite Rebels character and his favorite Star Wars character. And there was a... <laughs> Yeah, small. There was a, there was some discussion about the relationship between the two characters. So. Uh -oh. The relationship between a father and his daughter. <laughs> yep. <Say that. laughs> uh, but no. So what we said. Uh, no, he's my favorite character. So I'm I'm eager to. But I want to see. I don't want to comment too much on. I want to see more. Yeah. Before yeah. I comment, because there's something for me. It wasn't quite there. But I want to see him out and away from. Also. And I've said this, well, I've said this to you multiple I hate the Phantom 2 as a ship. Oh. Which is going back to Rebels. I hate, it looks like a, it looks like a bathtub. It looks like a bathtub <laughs> with a dorsal fin. The original, the original Phantom was an awesome ship, but I was I so sorry the when original. they, when they destroyed it and, and then they came up with this I bathtub. I don't know why they destroyed it. Ezra, Ezra destroys it. He's, he, of course he does. Yeah, he does stuff he's not supposed to do. And he's, oh, right. He's sort of, he's, Maul's been whispering in his ear about how great he is, and he thinks he's better than he really thinks he is. And mm -hmm. it's a whole Ezra slowly turning to the dark side thing. He, he doesn't do what he's told, and he doesn't listen to anybody. And, he, Fun. and so he ends up in a bathtub. Okay. And they end up with this bathtub with a dorsal fin. At least Sabine gave it a paint job. It still looks like a bathtub with a dorsal fin. Could have been worse. And a paint job. <laughs> so it's so yeah, that was also tough was to watch. I mean, like I can sit there and I can enjoy Chopper, but I hate that ship. There, I said it. That ship who was being driven by Harrison Dula. See, it was a segue I was going for a few minutes and ago. And speaking of Harrison Dula. And speaking of Harrison Dula. Her actress, the actress who plays her, is married to Ewan McGregor, which makes her the fourth member of the family. For those of you not keeping score, she's the fourth member of the McGregor family to appear in Star Wars. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Yes. Who's, okay? the, who's the third? The third is his daughter appears in um, an episode of, of Obi-Wan. Obi -Wan. Yes, this is correct. This is correct. As yep. the spice dealer or as the hobo, spice hobo. And then, of course, Ewan McGregor's uncle is. Anyone? 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 I Biggs. don't know his name is escaping me. I'm so sorry. Oh, Wedge Biggs. Antilles. Sorry. He's Dennis Lawson, a.k.a. Wedge Antilles. Oh, Wedge. Wedge. Sorry. Galaxy. Yes, Wedge. I had the right picture in my head, the wrong name came up. And then, as a as a weirder piece of trivia, Wedge Antilles went to college with Emperor Palpatine. Not the characters, but Dennis Lawson went to went to college with the uh, um I can't think of his name now, the actor who plays Palpatine. Yeah. Ian McDermott? Yes, Ian yes. McDermott. 
I don't know. I knew I'd come up with it eventually. But there you go. So anyway, but we were but enough about the wedge and Harris and Dula. Let's talk about Harris. Uh, General. General General Harrison. General. General Harrison. Who is my What's up with the giant Skittle plates that they they are all wearing now? Giant Giant Skittle plates? Yeah, remember. you didn't notice that on the So all the um Republic characters, the military ones to show rank, I guess, have a giant square box, metal square box on their uniform with like, looks like Skittles, like red Skittles oh, on them to, to show rank. I did not notice that. I didn't notice it. It didn't bother me. It clearly bothered you. Because it just, I don't ever remember ever seeing anything like this. I thought Hera had, I see, I thought on Hera, I thought she always had something. I think a few of them have, have had something. Oh! Jeez. Oh, those don't look like, those are more like a sweet tart than a Skittle. Oh, maybe, or like a, a Hull's lozenge. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, that, well, actually, that's the exact picture that Emily just pulled up. Oh, yeah. No, those are, yeah, no, those are like, um, those are a little like, uh, Dayquil, in case she, you get yeah, Dayquil. Okay. I mean, you figure she's in space. You gotta. Yeah. She probably gets like a little seasick going at warp nine, so she pops a little Dramamine and she's good to go. That's yeah. all there that. Is. Okay. And and the more the higher rank you have, the more <laughs> Dramamine that you're given. The more, or I don't know, maybe they're Dayquil, whatever that is. It's medic. It's a clearly medication. A Holtz lozenge, you know, something. Yeah, a throat lozenge or something in there. <laughs> Officials, drugs. or maybe it's just maybe it actually is just candy. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. And the more and the, the higher your rank, the more candy, candy you're you given. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Would nah. you like a sucker? Oh. Yeah. Or Grand Admiral. Sure. Yeah, when you make Grand Admiral, they give you a little baby Grand. And, oh my god. Uh, there you go. A one hundred. There we go. One hundred Grand <gasps> for one hundred Grand Admiral. <laughs> That'd be good. I think we've wandered again. <laughs> oh, we might have. So, no, so, what, did you guys, so what, right. did you guys, what did you guys think of Mary Winstead Elizabeth's, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's performance of Harrison Dula? What did you guys think? I liked it so far. So far, I think she's doing a, a decent job. Yeah. She's, um, see, the, the animation style for Hera was very unique. So it, it's hard to find physically someone that that's going to be able to completely embody that that aside portraying the character herself you know it's that nurturing like you know in charge character it's nurturing nurturing in charge but the thing that always that i always like about Hera is that she's she's really cool like not like in the like like Fonzie. Well, no, no, it's actually good. Like like that. You know, she she herself is always sort of together. You know, she's yes. always kind of collected. Yeah. She's always kind of like, like even when even when it's falling apart around her, she's still got everything under control. She's got that kind of Arthur Fonzarelli quality to her. You know, and 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 if it doesn't work, she's just gonna bang on it until it does. You know. Yeah, you know, and the, the, there's a problem with the ghost, so she bangs on it, starts playing a little Jerry Lee Lewis, and everything is fine. Yeah, yeah, and Winstead carries that through yeah. in this character. Yeah, that there's several points that yeah, you know, things are going awry between other characters, and she just you know sits back and goes, "No, this is you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to work out." I love the line in the second episode where, what is there? Like, well, this is this could blow up, and and Hera's like, like, do it, (laughs) and she's like, but you're a hologram. (laughs) I love that line. Doesn't 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 face Hera at all. Doesn't bother her. Even the droids were freaking out. Yeah. So yes, I, I thought she did a very good job with that. Yeah. So then I guess that leaves us with the star of the show, the other star of the show. Yes. Sabine Wren. The Lothcat. No, sorry, we did the Lothcat. Sabine. Yeah, we, yeah, we talked about the Lothcat. Sabine Wren. Yeah. You're on. Oh, Talk. great. Em, oh. Take it away. 
favorite. It's your second she's, favorite Star yeah, Wars character after second, Ahsoka. Yeah. Um. So far, I've liked it. I have been able to like do this weird thing where the actress can say a line and I can like translate, translate it, it into. into the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that earlier at one point. Yeah. I know, I, what you're, like, I know what you're talking about. And I was like, I can totally hear like rebels. Taya, Taya Sirkar. You yeah. Can, I can translate it into Taya Sirkar. And I can hear her saying that. And yeah. I, it's cool because it still sounds like Sabine. Every line, all the yeah. presentation is all Sabine. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I get it. I know exactly what you're talking about. And then there, I was really appreciative of this. In the second episode, in that fight scene between Sabine and what's her name? Hang on, I've got it. Pull it up. I've got it. I kept cast list. Where is it? Shin Hati. Shin Hati. Um, was kind of the apprentice bad guy lady. Um, Sabine's form is very rigid throughout that entire fight sequence. And that makes sense for her character because going back to Rebels, you have Sabine gets the dark saber and Ezra is teaching her to use it and is walking her through the stances, and she's very rigid when she does so. Mm. And it's so I have found that every presentation, physically and like verbally, has been very Sabine. It's interesting that you bring up the fight scene because when I was rewatching it with you earlier today. Um, I, one of the things that caught me, and I, I didn't, I didn't watch the second episode. Mm-hmm. I only got a chance to rewatch the first one. Well, I, I watched the second episode. I just didn't get a chance to rewatch it. But I was rewatching the first episode this morning, and the when they face off at the end of episode one, yeah, almost immediately, one of the things that that I caught and that I thought of was she's she's the way she's holding the lightsaber it's, was very Ezra. Ezra. Yeah, was, yes. and actually, and actually, a little bit of Kanan in there too. Yeah. So I thought that was very. They did a really good job choreographing that. Deliberate. That she's yeah. That it is. It is. She is very much a disciple of. Like I yeah. don't think of her if she had held the. And I, I just realized I where they're going. I would like to see her by the end of the series. She's got to take a very Ahsoka stance. Yeah. You know, like that classic, like kind of up the, up behind me kind of thing. Which is more Ahsoka's way of yeah. fighting. So you get the so actually you get the impression that she has not she did not get very far into her, into training. her training with Ahsoka. Yeah. Yeah, it could because that's very that's more Kanan's influence and Ezra's influence on her fighting style than the that's way that so Ahsoka famous. or the way that Anakin fight. Yeah. Yeah. And even in this, I, I want to say in the second episode that she, it was implied that. Their her apprenticeship didn't get that far with right. Ahsoka before they they parted ways. That was it was just a very brief thing, um, but I, the stance it was something I even noticed that it it was um, very much like Ezra of just how like front forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even uh, Rosario Dawson in some of the the clips uh, I saw ahead of time. In an interview, saying that something that they they spent a lot a lot of time on was the choreographing and the the setup for the the lightsaber battles. Yeah, that they paid a lot of attention to how that was supposed to be done. It was very meticulous. Well, that's one of the things I love. I love particularly even even more in Clone Wars. The, some of the lightsaber battles in Rebels are some of my favorite. Yeah fight scenes in all of Star Wars. Like, Kanan versus the Inquisitor is such a great fight scene. Ahsoka uh, versus is Darth Vader, Vader yes. is, oh, is, is, is probably my favorite scene in all of Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, that's such an emotional oh battle. And it's such a well-done fight. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple. I feel like there's a couple other lightsaber battles that are really good too. But those are the first, Those are the two that really, really spring to mind. And even speaking of the lightsabers, the way that the lightsaber is, um, let's say, animated. Yeah. The, the structure of the light of uh, Sabine's lightsaber. If you ever watch watching the Rebel series, they they draw them a very thin blade 
Yeah. There, there. Where, I mean, and this was intentional. Ever, a, a lot of stuff in Rebels is intended to look more like Rolf McQuarrie's yep. original drawings, which is why, which is why Chopper looks. The Chopper is based more on Rolf McQuarrie's concept art for R two D two. Zeb is Rolf McQuarrie's concept art for Chewbacca. Um, and so the lightsabers in Rebels are Ralph McQuarrie's concept art for what that shaft of light should look like. So yeah, so that's a very intentional choice on the part of on the part of Dave Filoni and the animators and the producers of Rebels. But finish what you were saying. I'm sorry. But they translated that too into the so into the the series here that um, Sabine's lightsaber would look that way, right? Because you know. Um, uh what's her name the the sith uh uh shin hatai Hati. was hers is Hati? thicker and um more what we're used to and seeing in the other lightsabers where sabine's was a, a thinner blade yeah so the, they they have taken a lot out of rebels and did it justice by putting it into into a, the Ahsoka series, and they paid that much attention to it. Hmm. I'm excited to see Sabine going forward. Like, like I want, I can't wait to see Sabine in next week's episode or this week's episode, which will be last week's episode by the time this airs. But <laughs> <laughs> it will. Um, but it I'm, will then be now. Very soon. Soon. Um, I'm excited to see Sabine because the last thing that happened at the end of the series was that she cuts her hair. She does a remarkably fine job of cutting her hair with a. <laughs> she went to the barber shop after and got it. I'm just saying up. that's a really for for <laughs> slicing it off with a knife. That's a mighty clean cut she got there. That's that's exactly what I... Paige said. She, she you know she watched Mulan several times before doing that. That yeah side <laughs> <laughs> with a very with... small blade. We'll let that slide for <laughs> just a second so that I can finish my thought, which is that the one challenge with it, with, with watching this character, is that she's not physically Sabine because we've never seen yeah. Sabine with long hair. So it's sort of weird to buy that as Sabine. But now that she's got the short haircut, it's like, OK, now now, now I can it's, now it's I can Sabine. buy it as Sabine and I yeah. can buy it. So and that's no reflection on. I, I think that the actress's job might have been intentional. intentional. Yeah, I don't know. Because she was not wearing her armor for like most it, it, all of it. Right. She was in completely different clothes, clothes that we've basically never seen her in before. But now we get to see her in her armor. Yeah. All right. Well, it, it, and I, I just I just did before, but it, it is it's very much taking a page from Mulan. Right. Yeah. You know, it's that transformation of one version of the character to another version of the character. So you you went from the version of Sabine that you don't know. Long hair, regular clothes wearing, she has shunned who you know the character that she that everyone knew her from Rebels. And she has had a transformation, a little transformation, an awakening back to the character that you knew. So she's back to the short hair. She's back to wearing her Beskar. She's, you know, back to being the character that we last saw at the end of Rebels. Well, you figure at that point too. I mean, it's an interesting. You talk with the character is that she's she's um, at, at a point in time where it's kind of painful for her to be Sabine as we know her. You know, yeah. she's basically she's been on the fall. My understanding of things is that she's been on the fall the whole time. That she's been this sort of Ezra says, stay here and keep Lafal safe. So she doesn't participate. She doesn't go off and participate in the Galactic Civil War the way Hera and and uh, Rex and perhaps Zeb do. Um, she's she stays where she is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think for her, it's like, well, you know, trying to not she's not part of that group anymore anything there is just a reminder of who she was and and the hair is yeah. the, the shorter hair is a reminder of who she was the armor is an idea a reminder of who that person was and so she tries to you know sabine is a character who's always sort of resists what she's supposed to be yeah so it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna not be i, I i'm gonna resist being who i am yeah 
and and try to be somebody else, even though she's still very much Sabine. She's still very much, forgive the term, a rebel. She's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. No. But the, and again, the subtle details, uh, the subtle touch of the details of her drawings all over the place. Right. Yeah. Uh, in her in her room in the the radio tower on they left it on the ship the the little drawings and whenever she's back on the ship she's looking at it and the the thinking back to um the times with Ezra so I I, I like that they they kept that in there because that, that is very much part of that character and who she is and I, wanna, and I wanna see more of that because I that's the character that I fell in love with I mean yeah. it's such a it's such a great it's such a great uh, dimension to the Star Wars. It's a, it, to the Star Wars universe. Yeah. This character who's just sort of you. You don't have in any. You don't really have a character who is an artist. No, she's an artist and an explosives expert. Yes. I mean, it's a great dynamic. We better get a good Sabine explosion by the end, end of the series. series. Look at all. Oh, the I'm sure we will. I want to see her. What I really want to see, now that they've cast her live action, I want to see them go back and, like, literally, like, because they did, the, for those who remember, when they first, Rebels first premiered, ahead of Rebels, they did four shorts that aired on uh, Disney Channel, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did, and yeah. they did a hysterically funny one where it's her, they, basically to introduce these characters, and there's one that's her stealing a ship from an Imperial compound and it's a wonderful bit and it's the only one later on in the series like i think the end of the first season she goes back to that compound and they revisit that short and i really and really like, hey you're the lady them. who oh, did that yeah, and they, they, yeah i think the line is oh no not again <laughs> and i yeah, i yeah. really want to see i really want to see her go, go into back. action and just have this one hapless stormtrooper who goes Oh God! I thought I, I thought I was past this. I thought we were done with this. I really want to see them do a throwback. I mean, it's a deep dive, but I really want to see them do a throwback to that because yes. it's such a great. Oh, even I don't even care at the point if they. I don't care if they do a shot-for-shot shot remake of the original short just for funsies. I really want to see that moment in live action now because it's it's such a. And I think those are you got to hunt around for them, but I think those are on Disney Plus. I think you can find them. Yeah, I'm sure you can find them somewhere. I I, I would not put that past. Um, might be there. I wouldn't put that past uh, Filoni because he, he's that much of a, a nerd. Yeah, Filoni loves his details. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's a kid playing with his toys. Yes. Yeah. So I think let's, we've discussed all the animated characters. What else did we yeah. want to discuss? Um. Oh, so I guess do do did we do overall impressions? Can I? I don't do impressions. I can do, I can do Christopher Lloyd, Kermit the Frog, and um, you do a good Fozzie. I thank you. I do a very good Fozzie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who I do impressions of somebody else, but I can't remember who off the top of my head. Those are the only But no, actually, what, for walking wasn't it? One of the cool things that I caught watching the show this afternoon, which is that when you listen to, I want to touch on Kevin Kilner again for a second. In the opening of the, not the opening, but in the, the first scene with Sabine in the first episode where she's on the speeder bike and she's vroom, away from the city and there's this sort of chase that takes place there. I love, they, they it goes to this like hard rock, you know, yes. kind of thing. And then there's vocals there. And if you listen to the vocals, that's like a very... Like that kind of, I don't know, I, I should know this, but that, that sort of arabesque, uh, uh, like Psy Snoodles kind of sound to it, or like the, or like the music in, um, um, that's in Phantom Menace when they go into Maz Cantina, Maz, Maz's Cantina, there's a song that's playing there. It's that same sort of, it's not English, it's not quite gibberish, it's a very specific, like it's that Aqualesh, very sort of Star Wars type music yeah they they, they even nice. they even did it in um olga's katina in in galaxy's edge where uh dj rex is playing music and he'll, he'll play songs with that same yeah 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 vocals 
the, yeah. you know, not vocals, but the exact vocals, but exact the, the language. Vocal language, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just thought that was really cool. Nice uh, yeah. detail that I, I missed the first time around, but on the second time around, I, I caught it. Like, oh. When you mentioned it, I, I do remember hearing that, and, and again, the transition mm-hmm. and how well they worked in the music, because that, that fits that scene so perfectly. Not a traditional, you know, singing kind of classical opera. Well, uh, it also keeps it because when I watched it the first time, I thought, well, this is a different sound for Star Wars. And then when I watched it the second time, it was like, no, actually, it's it's that sort of size noodles kind. It's not. And then it's it's a different sound in Star Wars, and then it's not a sort of typical John Williams sound. But then when you listen to it the second time around, it's like, oh, wait, this is a size noodles kind of sound to it. And there, and by you know, by definition, is therefore yes, a John Williams Star Wars kind of sound. But sorry, you you started to ask a question about impressions. Oh, well, I was going to say, how would you um, uh, early grades on the uh, the first two episodes? What would you like out of ten? How would you you rate these episodes? You're looking at me like I already have an answer. You want a minute to think because I can talk. I yeah. Okay. Um. I'm going to say like eight out of ten because there are some things there are some there are some storyteller type things that are bothered me particularly in the first episode that I find inherently problematic across a lot of Disney Plus's shows. Um, I find I even even Muppets Mayhem and and some of the Marvel shows and some of the Star Wars shows there are some there are some we have to get this character to this place to tell the story but it doesn't really make sense if I, I'll, I'll use a specific example sabine is at the she's at the watchtower she sees ahsoka's ship fly overhead and she goes into the city to talk to Ryder azadi and ahsoka why we've already established that she's she and ahsoka have had a falling out so she's not going to rush to see ahsoka she's blown off Ryder azadi so she's not going to be in any rush to see Ryder azadi so why did Ahsoka Why? go to the city? You know, and it's that kind of like, and and even then, like that whole the whole sequence with Ryder Azadi, like what I said, er, I was joking earlier, but I was very serious. Like, really, you're going to introduce somebody that you don't even know is there? You're a really bad public speaker, Ryder Azadi. Like that's yeah. that's well, terrible I think, leadership. I think someone had just said she was just here. Right. I, I think they they inferred that she was standing there at the beginning of it. Okay. And then while he's, you know, going on probably for half an hour of talking. Right. But then she says, oh, was that today? It slipped my mind. Or was that yesterday? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Mm. But it, it seemed very. Small and they. Yeah, it, it's there was a lot in that moment that felt very inconsistent to the character, but they did it to give the moment to kind of build to try and define the character a little bit better. And I just thought. Yeah. You, they they could have told this moment a little bit better than they did, and maybe if they had cleaned that up, then it might have cleaned up the moment later on when she like she just goes to the city to see two people that she clearly does not want to talk to, yeah, or see, you know. So I got it because of stuff like that. I guess. And here's another thing that I can't figure out while we're on this. This is another one. Is Thrawn back or not? Now, obviously, Thrawn is not back. There's a map to find Thrawn, but they keep. But Ahsoka keeps talking about the whispers of Thrawn being back. See, it's or and why is there a yeah. map? To, and why is there a map to Thrawn? Why like, is did he in he, a different galaxy? And well, I can there... I can understand why he's in a different well, galaxy. Yeah, that's the Miracles. end of Rebels. Sure. Yeah. But then, but how are there? Whispers? How did he leave a map to find it? Like, did he know where he was going? That be? Can, that's well a, that. That the Night Sisters created the map. Okay, the Night Sisters knew where he. Okay. Well, it's in, with the the magic and stuff. I I can buy that the Night Sister would oh. be able to, you know, because they have that their that whole, the magic and the kind of different view of the Force and being able to to figure figure things out. Divine, where okay, oh, yeah. that's that's a different. Okay. okay. But yeah, there's some inconsistent things there that. So I gotta say eight out of ten. But other than that, I love it. It's the most Star Wars thing that I've seen in a long time. And I say that also because the other time where I felt like, oh, this is Star Wars to me, and I still feel this time every day, 
is when I watch the first ep- the very first episode of Rebels, the first like sort of that that opening heist sequence <laughs> is is very very Star Wars to me. Oh That's God, the that that to me is the fun of Star Wars and what's to me what I, I know everybody has a different interpretation of what Star Wars is and some mm. people who like it a little lighter, some people who think who get upset when it's too light yeah. and don't like Ewoks because they're too quote unquote kitty. I like when Star Wars is, I like when I can share Star Wars with my kids. Yeah. That's yes. what Star Wars is to me. And, and that opening heist sequence in Rebels, and particularly the way the characters kind of push against each other and, and pick on each other and yeah. and sort of do that to each other. That's Star Wars I to me. That. I love that. Actually, one of the, I love how physical, in going back to Rebels, I love how physical the characters are with each other. Yeah. But, that Zeb kind of will walk past Ezra and just sort of shove, shove him out of the way, or just or because, or uh, and and Sabine will do the same thing. She'll she'll sort of push Zeb. The fact that he's like <laughs> twice her size doesn't phase her. She yeah, pushes him. She pushes Ezra. Chopper, you know, goes up and tasers Ezra. <laughs> and and how physical those characters are They're with each siblings. other. They're siblings. They're siblings. Really are siblings. So yeah, because I. But even my my younger ones. Have been wanting to watch the series and they've been watching it and they've been enjoying it. So it, it where versus um, Andor, they, that is such a slow burn. Uh, Some of you may have noticed that Emily and I were not in any of the episodes where uh, the, the WD Magic cast discussed Andor, and that's because <laughs> we don't care. We can't talk. We can't. I, I like the prison. Go. The prison. Was it was cool. okay. The prison oh, part was cool. I, yeah. I I had a lot of problems with that. I hate that show. Yeah, so leave leave Post- Andy Circus in the jail before he gets to Wakanda. I hated so I hated Andor. I hated Andor. <laughs> so <laughs> glad it ended. You say Rogue One is better? Rogue One is so. Oh, that's what we should watch next. We should watch Rogue One. That's what I've been saying to Callan. He's like, he wants to watch Andor. Okay, we'll watch Rogue One. We gotta watch Rogue One. Uh, uh but we can watch both. We'll see. I will, you know, just to, okay, before we, we get too, too long into this, uh, <laughs> mine is, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give it a seven for now. Yeah. Um, I, I've enjoyed it. Hmm? I said, I've enjoyed these episodes. Um, uh, it's giving me some nice action. I, um, for some reason, as much as I loved Rosario Johnson as Ahsoka in the, in the Mandalorian, I think she's very, too businesslike. Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's it, it, none of that. Very like, Ahsoka. Yeah. She and she was in in Mandalorian. She was very Ahsoka in Rebels. Yeah. And here she's here she's the heavy. She's yes. she's more. Yeah. She's almost more Obi Wan Kenobi or or Qui Gon Jinn and not enough Anakin. I'm because she's got to be the heavy. There's none of that like smirk or like little right. like yeah. And this is see this is another one of those inconsistencies is that Ahsoka is the one who says I'm no Jedi, so now she's she's taking on a Padawan. Yeah. I don't know. I, I yeah. yeah. But um. I mean, but uh, you know, she's got to take on a Padawan so that we've got a story to tell. Right. So, it also so you have that balance against the right the dark side. Uh, you know, on the, the I, other I think, see, here's what I think. I would have liked to, and maybe this is where they're going with it, is that it's more interesting to me if you have Sabine going, make me a Jedi, make me a Jedi, make me a Jedi, and Ahsoka going, no, look, I'm I'm not the uh, one. I'm not in this business. Although that's although that was kind of what, that was kind of Kanan's, Kanan and Ezra's story, yeah. was Ezra going, I want to be a Jedi, and Kanan going, I, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I never really finished this. I'm really not the one to train you, and it's, Fairly early on, he gets over that, and I mean, it's it's a great yeah. character thing, but yeah, um, and I, I've I've been sitting here watching the two episodes, and both episodes, I I'm sitting there towards the end, going, this feels more like a Star Trek episode <laughs> than it does a Star Wars episode, just <laughs> in just the way that everything is written and portrayed and filmed and it's shown to you it just very much feels like 
something more out of Star Trek than it does Star Wars. And not saying that's a bad thing. It just, it's, I, I, I'm just like, I'm, oh, I'm watching Star Star Trek. No, wait, no, wait, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I'm enjoying them, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Mm. So, but it's, I'm still, there's still just something a little more, and I have come up with a theory, and I'm not going to share it on the on oh. air of of who the uh, of who the um, uh, inquisitor is. Not the um, not the inquisitor. The uh, Balin Skull. No, no, no. The other McAdam McGarren McGarren. Huh? No. Hank Aaron. The the Inquisitor character. Yeah. At the end. Yes. And the, okay. who Ben was saying earlier today, who is that? And we're like, we don't know. That's the big mystery. Okay. He thinks he knows who it is. Good night, I, everybody. What a fun show. No! Yeah. <laughs> we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. See, oh, see I have, uh, I don't know. I had to, I, I would say this on air, Emily already knows this, but I had, I have, I had at one point a theory on who Shin Hati is. Yeah. Um, which I'm, which I'm not, you know, Anakin becomes Darth Vader. I'm not. You know, well, <clears throat> could become Shin Hati. Yeah, I know. Maybe. I'm not buying it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. There's, there's an age thing there that I, that wouldn't work. She's about Harry's age. Okay. Yeah. And so, what's your what's your rating? What? We we need Emily's rating. Uh, right. Oh yeah. What's uh, your rating? I'm gonna give it an eight and a half just because it's Ahsoka and I've been waiting for this sure. show for two years and I can't have it disappoint. Oh, me. I actually gave a rating. Yeah. Yes. Did. Do that. You gave an official rating. Oh my god. Another first. Oh my gosh, what's happened to this show? There, 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 there. No, wait, I need to give this, so it's out of 10, I need to give this a new rating. Forget what I said earlier. <laughs> you said eight earlier. I said eight earlier. Um, all right, good. I give this, um, I, I give the show 12 Loft Cats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds really good. Yeah. That sounds much better. That, that sounds better than the eight that you gave it just before. But, see, but twelve lost cats not as good as fifteen lost cats. So which is where which was out, it was out of a scale of fifteen lost cats. It was. Yeah, but I only gave it twelve because the you other three the other three lost cats were naughty. <gasps> yeah. No. And so and and so Ryder Azadi is not going to take care of them. <laughs> He released them out into the plains of Lothal, and they were <laughs> they were eaten by wolf wolves. <laughs> Sad. I don't know if I can finish the show. You're making me cry. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's time to the Sarlacc pit. You're mean. Are there Sarlacc pits on Lothal? I don't think Why so. Why not? They could be. I stub my toe. There are there are aliens across the galaxy that are that are loosely related to Sarlacc creatures. There are. Yeah, aren't the like isn't the isn't the uh the Dianoga is like a loose relation of the of the Sarlacc, isn't it? I or think so. I'd have to ask Dan. There's something in Star Wars that is a that is like a distant cousin species cousin of like cats are to lions as such and such is to the Sarlacc. Yes. Yeah, but I don't remember maybe maybe the crate dragon or the Dianoga, something like that. Maybe. Maybe. No, oh wait. What are but there sorry. are things that um, there are things out there, or the things like the, the things from episode seven that Han and Chewie. Are, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I've forgotten what we were saying. I was giving my. Rating. I was giving her eight and a half because it's Ahsoka. Gave, gave an eight and a half. I gave an eight and a half, just and I, because I've been waiting on this show and, and I need it to be good. Yeah. I, You've been waiting a long time. For I've this. been waiting like. I've known about it for two years. I've been waiting for it since, like, Clone Wars. And well, two years, and we kind of suspected, like, yeah. as soon as Disney Plus announced that they were doing stuff live action, everybody kind of... Mm-hmm. And then she shows up in season two of... Right, and, like, and we all knew... Yeah, well, right, Felona, Felona had been making noises about and whispering about yeah. 
do it. I think there was, I think at one point there was like an announcement that was like, they're going to do a live action season. Rebel season five of star Wars rebels will be live action on Disney plus. You went, okay, cool. And then that I think got scrapped in favor of the, the, the story that they were really going to tell was Ahsoka. Yeah. Which I'm sure the two were, you know, the same. Yeah. So, but you've got a theory on who the, who the little guy is. Okay. The Inquisitor. Oh, the Inquisitor dude. Yeah. Mm. And on that bombshell. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Thank you both for joining me. You know what I want to do at some point with you guys? Because we did a show. I want to pitch this to you guys now. We did a show last year where we talked about the the translation from live action to um or for animation to live action. And at some point, maybe after Ahsoka or maybe after maybe some point. We should go, we should revisit that and follow up and talk about some of the characters who we've seen transition to live action and if there are characters that like who do we want to see now that they've checked those off the list. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. I do not remember who was on my list. Well, I think there was one who was on all of our lists, and Sabine. there's Sabine was on our list. I remember we had a conversation. We had a whole conversation about whether how was was Chopper going to work live action. Yeah. There was a whole conversation about whether Zeb was going to work live action. And that was beautiful when he showed yes. up. Um, I want to see more of Zeb. And there's one, there are one or there's one character who I think we'll see make the jump to live action. I won't say anything now. And then there's another one. I desperately still, I, another one who was kind of on all of our lists that we talked about. I don't remember. Who. Hmm. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk after radar hits okay. the button. And on that note, note, thank you again. Stay tuned to the WD Magic Cast when you hear us do part two of not only this episode but part two of our of our so Disney good. Star Wars yeah. live animation to live action comparison. Fine. It's coming up. We'll do that sometime. We'll like, do that. In the next <laughs> Absolutely. Episode. Go ahead and close out the show. Close again. Thank you again, man, Emily, for joining. Me in this discussion of Ahsoka. Make sure to check that show out on Disney+. Plus. A lot of fun. Really enjoyable. Good Star Wars all around. Join our conversation. Let us know what you thought. Like I said at the beginning of the show. Find us on the social networks at WD Magicast on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. We are all over there. You can leave us a voice message as well. Be heard on the show. You can do this over at Anchor.fm or the Anchor app. And get yourself on the show as well. Links to all these are in the show notes. Thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have these days, but the fact that we get to spend some time together really means a lot to us over here at the WD MagicCast family. You are part of our family as well. We do consider you part of the family and love having you here. Please tell other people to join the family. Join our family. Let them be know. Let them know about the show. Send out a link on the social networks, or if you really want to really help out go over to apple Podcasts, go over to stitcher leave us a rating review we have all five star reviews at this moment keep them coming we need more the more that we get the more that they're going to help tell other people out the show because Walt believed in a big disney family so do i don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it this way you always know when new episodes are posted why um while you're at it also consider becoming a premium subscriber really really help the show i'll keep things going um movie reviews and whatnot they they don't come for free so anchor.fm slash wd magicast slash support is how you can help this show out and uh we would really appreciate it you can also check out the merchandise shop get yourself some cool wd magicast stuff over there as well that's on t public links to all these are in the show notes as well because remember this show is brought to you by listeners like you Whatever you're facing out there, whatever hard times and troubles you may be having, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give in. Be your own hero. Never give up. Never give in. Let your light shine because you are special. You are unique. There is no one like you. And that is for a good reason. Now I'd like to end the show with a quote from Walt Disney himself. All the adversity I've had in my life all my troubles and obstacles have strengthened me. Again, that's Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone, and I'll see you next time.